years ago now, my youngest brother had a stroke and it landed him in the hospital in Fresno for about five weeks. And a lot of things uh, were going on in his body, you know, during those five weeks. It seemed like everything was kind of going wrong. And at one point, about a week into his hospitalization, he had to have emergency bladder surgery. And after his surgery, he woke up to find himself in his bed, hospital bed, in the room. It was night, and my sister-in-law, his wife, was sleeping on the sofa next to the bed. And he felt something on his stomach, and when he looked down, uh, he saw a steady stream of blood coming out of the surgery wound, and it was kind of pooling there. And of course, he became very frightened and called out for his wife. She ran over to the nurse's station to tell them, my husband is bleeding, but there was nobody at the nurse's station. So she then proceeded to run up and down the hall in the hospital there, trying to find somebody. Eventually she picked up her cell phone and called 911. <laughs> and when the nurse finally arrived, she had told her why I called 911. And the nurse said, I can't believe that you called 911. She said, well, my husband was dying. Was the emergency magic right there in the hospital and she calls 911. She said that she was so afraid my brother was going to die that she took the most extreme action she could think of. Well in the gospel today we hear about some guys who take extreme action. They have a friend who's paralyzed. They believe Jesus can heal him but when they bring him, carrying him on a mat, to the place where Jesus is they can't gain access Jesus because there are so many people in the house and around the house. So what do they do? They take action. Some of them get on the top of the house, remove some of the roofing, and lower their friend in the presence of Jesus. Jesus admires their faith and he takes action. On behalf of their friends, he heals the man. Now you read this and say that is definitely an extreme course of action to take. But it points to the great faith of those people involved. Sometimes our faith compels us to do some things that may be considered extreme. We do that for ourselves or for other people. And the Bible is filled with stories of extreme faith. Abraham willing to sacrifice his son. Moses leading people through the waters of the Red Sea. Queen Esther risking her life by making an unannounced appearance to her husband, the king. Extreme faith, sometimes extreme action can accomplish things. Think of people who fast for lengthy periods of time in order to call attention to some injustice. Think of the person who quits a good paying job decides to stay home to take care of a child with special needs. Think about a person who's willing to lay down his life for someone else. Some people suggest that the faith of contemporary people has become mediocre at best. Maybe what is needed to move the gospel forward is an extreme faith, the kind of faith that finds us willing to do almost anything in order to accomplish God's will. Think about the gospel story again. I'm sure there were some people there who told these men they did the, the, that they did a very foolish thing by getting on the house and lowering their friend through the roof. But Jesus took notice and it worked. And then think about Jesus himself. Didn't he do really a very foolish thing he suffered and died for sinful people. If that's not an extreme act of faith, I don't know what is.